Hi guys, Rich from Art of Smart. Welcome back to another YouTube video. Um, so you join us back over here today, our product down in Norwich. I'm at this absolutely beautiful house behind me here. So you'll have probably seen an uh, existing video from this project here when we actually began the retrofit. So this project was a retrofit system. Luckily there was already some speaker cables installed. Luckily there was already lots of data cables installed. Um, but the light existing, it did have smart lighting, uh, but it was Nico Home Control. So what we've done is we'd ripped out the Nico Home Control system and upgraded it to control for lighting and all the keypads. Replaced the awful Nico touchscreen with a control for intercom. Um, we've then upgraded all the speakers in the house to episode speakers uh, and some trying speakers as well. And then we've installed a rack. So the existing cupboard had lots of mixed match equipment in. We've ripped all that out and we've installed a rack. Um, and inside the rack, full package managed network with ruckus Wi-Fi throughout the house. A full Hikvision CCTV um, upgrade. We've then added some triad audio. And then last but not least, in the cinema, um, we've done a JBL 5. 0.2.2 Dolby Atmos system and that is powered by a new Anthem AVR. So yeah, the client is a massive film buff and he's really, really into his films. So as I'm sure Rob's pulling through some sexy B-roll of the rack here, you will see a device that looks slightly like a microwave. Um, that is actually a server. So that server has thousands and thousands and thousands of films on um, that he streams to, to his devices. So yeah, anyway. What I'm going to do, I'm going to take you in, we'll have a look around, and especially we're going to show you the new T4 touchscreens, which have got the Chime Video doorbell. More importantly on that touchscreen, we've integrated his Tesla car, so the Tesla is integrated directly into it. So one of the things I forgot to mention about this house is actually its location. So you would never, never, never know where it, would, where it was. And um, then you've got this beautiful house here, but we've got these absolutely incredible woods over here. So anyway, I've done enough talking for now, Really cool house, let's go in and have a look around. So even as I get to the front door here, we're greeted with the first bit of technology and that is the Control 4 Chime doorbell. So this doorbell is linked into the Control Force touchscreens and the Intercom Anywhere app, um, so the client can access that on the mobile phone. Now also, what we've got in this porch, so say if somebody had walked up here and it was dark on an evening, say, Rob's just gonna have a little look up at the ceiling and we've got the Faraday external motion sensor there, which is gonna turn these lights on. Uh, and these are actually all the Collingwood H2 Pro Extremes. So these are the down lights that are IP rated on the front and on the back, designed to be fitted outside in Sofis. Um, and they're actually one of the only downlights on the market that meets the regs properly for this with the external influences and stuff. Um, also on the outside, if we just cast down right down to the end of the property there, uh, we've got one of the Hikvision CCTV cameras. So this house has full CCTV around the perimeter and a couple of internal cameras too. So the one thing I didn't mention when I mentioned the intercom is this front door is actually tied in and integrated into the system with a digital lock. So say if a guest such as ourselves had to come to the door, call on. Hi mate, it's Rich from Art of Smart. And then he could even decide he wanted to let me in or not let me in. So let's go in and have a look around. So even the back rear side of this property is full full of technology. So as you can see up here, we're continuing the security theme with full 360 CCTV around the property. And we've also got all the outside lighting, which is time to come on on an evening. Now if you continue further down into the garden and you actually have a look over to the side here, the full garden and all of these woods are covered with Wi-Fi. So we have a ruckus external access point and that's allowing us to get three bars right to the end of the forest, which is really, really cool because what the client's going to do is he's going to put a zip line in for his kids. Aren't they lucky? So in the lounge here, we've got one of the SR260 control for remote controls. And what we've got this control in is both the music from the episode speakers I've got above me here, but also we've got the TV. So if we come through onto the watch menu, we've got both Apple TV and the LG television on this. So 
come through there onto the Apple TV, which is connected up to the client server. We've got Netflix, Spotify, and YouTube. I'm, like I say, I could use this remote control as well for music. A nice, easy way for me to do that would be using the Control 4 on-screen display by pressing the red button. So because we've got a Control 4 EA1 processor behind this TV, we've got the ability to get into the on-screen display. So you can see here, favorited already, and we're just using the remote control to move around here. It basically turns the TV into a large touchscreen. So I've got here, client's got a few of his favorite stations. They're trance, he's a bit of a trance head. So I could come through into here, which would fire the speakers up. I then could use the remote control to turn that up. Move that off and I'll take you through some other stuff on the on-screen display. So coming back here, we've got the ability to control the lights. So the minute here we're on the scenes, we can control the lights in this room. We'll turn that down to zero, turn the wall lights off. Of course, turn those back on. What else have we got on here? We've got the heating and the thermostats. So they're currently in the off mode. Um, and the reason we've got those switched off at this moment in time is obviously because it's some in the UK, so we don't need the heat. And then we've also got the CCTV and cameras on here. So as you can see from the camera, I mean, I'm not gonna show you all the cameras. But if I was to go on the front door camera there, where we came in earlier on in the video, we can see the divans parked out the front and we've got a nice clear, nice wide image of the front door, garage door, and all our vans outside there. And then any other custom buttons we've got, such as our house, all on, all off, which is for the cleaner, house off leaving, house off bedtime, all on and all off. So yeah, love the SR260, love putting on the Control 4 on this on-screen display, really nice, easy functional to use. Uh, and if I was to turn the room off, this would just turn everything off in here, I could get myself off to bed. So one of the really good features in the, both the hallways, en suites and outdoor areas of this property is that we've got motion controlled lighting. So using the Faraday and JDG motion sensors, what we're actually able to do on the property is turn the lights on. Now the main difference between using a Faraday connected to a Control 4 or lighting automation system and using one that is just simply connected to mains wiring is we can actually use the sensors to trigger different things depending on the time of the day. So what I mean by that is it's early dusk here. So the sun's just kind of starting to set, but it's not dark. I'm still getting a bit of ambient light from outside the property. And what that's actually doing is just turning these spots on to 20%. Um, however, later in the evening, it may turn it on to 100% or even 80%. Uh, and then if you get up during the night or you get a guest that gets up during the night for the toilet, It'll just turn it on to a light 5% just to illuminate the way down the hallway without firing too much light in. So yeah, let's go on to the next room and have a look at the bedroom. So coming through into the master bedroom now, um, again, we've got the smart lighting keypads from Control 4 throughout this property. This was actually an upgrade from the Nico home control system the client previously had. And when we go downstairs, uh, this kind of house is a little bit of an upside down house, when we go Back downstairs, I'm gonna show you uh, the lighting panel location before we come to the rack room. Uh, what we've got going on on these keypads though, um, again, I mentioned the client is an absolute tech addict. Um, so we've obviously got the lighting all on in this space, which will put the lights on and the pendants next to the bed on. We could drop that down into a little bit more chill if I was coming in on the evening and relaxing. So I've also got on this keypad, um, we've got the music. So we put a music button on here so the client has quick access um, to get his music playlist on, which on here we've got trance. Volume buttons here, we'll do the volume up and also the volume back down. Or we could put it onto Apple TV. So by pressing the Apple TV button there on the lighting keypad, that's gonna turn the music off, turn the TV on, and it's gonna put it onto the right input for the Apple TV and wake the box up. So now the TV's turned on, I could come over to the bedside table where we've got the remote control. Again, SR26 remote control. And just straight away, because that's now on, we've got control on the Apple TV. Now this TV as well, also has an EA1 controller on it, meaning that we're pressing the red button on the remote control, 
means we get access to the Control 4 on-screen display. Now, I've mentioned this EA1 a couple of times in this video. What our designers will actually do is spec these in behind the main TVs within a project for two reasons. One, to boost the Control 4 wireless signal strength, which is called Zigbee. Um, but also so that the um, client can get the on-screen display and you've got access to check things such as the cameras from bed. Um, again, we've got our cameras through there, make adjustments to the heating, or maybe before he goes to bed, if he didn't fancy getting his phone out, we could come back through and we could initiate a house off on the house button there. House off bedtime. So in this master bedroom, and what we actually recommend in all bedrooms, um, however bu budget will usually mean that we'll pull it back, um, but what we recommend is this, which is what I refer to as the hotel style switching, which is like having the light switches at the side of the bed. In this particular bedroom, the client's gone for it duplicating what it does um, around the bedroom, and as you can see at the other side of the bed there, we also have another keypad there, so at both sides of the beds. Now, I have mentioned before, this was a retrofit installation, so those are actually slightly wider than we'd usually go on one of our projects, um, but it just means that from the side of your bed, you've got access to control your lamp or your pendant, you can control the lights in this room, or you can double tap off, which will initiate a house off in the house, turning off all lighting, heating, and AV. So coming through into the ensuite, we had have a kind of uh, set up same as the rest of the house. Um, you can actually see here, and this is the first time you've seen it, uh, one of the heat mines, the thermostats. So usually on our projects, what we do with these thermostats is install them with the temperature boxes. Um, however, in this house, because it was a retrofit solution, um, we had to make do with what was existing. So these have been put into the rooms. Um, however, these are actually wireless thermostats. So wireless ones which have batteries in them, which are gonna need changing and gonna need maintenance, obviously, um, when those batteries die. So using a hardwired solution and not having batteries to change is a much better option. So let's have a look back at the tech in the ensuite. We've got a bathroom TV over to the side of me here, and we've also got speakers in this room. Again, same as we've got in the master bedroom, how we've got it set up for the client is that if they just press the button on the keypad, as they're walking into the ensuite out there, that will fire in their Spotify playlist on a shuffle. So what I'm gonna do, I'm gonna flip that around, I'm gonna knock some tunes on. And what the music's actually gonna do in here, depending on whether it was turned on for a morning shower or whether it was turned on for an evening shower, is it's gonna turn on to different volume levels. Um, so again, you don't disturb people in the morning or you can have it cranked up a little bit more on an evening. So over my shoulder here, we've got the lighting panels and the lighting control system for the full house. This used to be situated on the wall up there in some awful Nico panels, um, which the guys will put a little photo of on here. Uh, and what we've done is we relocated them into a control for five module and two module enclosure. And what I mean by that is it can fit in five modules and the bottom one fits in two modules. Um, so what I've got in the top ones is we have four dimmers controlling the lights around the house and controlling 32 loads of lighting control. Each channel, uh, each module has eight, eight channels. We also have one relay, which is controlling the sockets in the kids' bedrooms and the extractor fans around the house. The next modules down in the bottom enclosure here, we have the buzz infinite gateway and the buzz power supply that are doing all the keypads. And finally, we've got a dim rail mounted Ethernet switch. It's gonna take a network connection from the main AV racks termination box over to here and then it's going to split it out to all the different modules i'm um, yeah um, and that is the lighting panels that we've got here so in the kitchen space here we've got one of the new control 4 t4 touchscreens i know aren't we lucky because these at the minute are like absolute rocking horse yeah, really, really hard to get hold of. So what I'm gonna get Rob to do is just gonna come in a touch closer here. I'm gonna take you through the touch screen. So we use as our preset and kind of as our screensaver, um, the time and date. I find it makes for a really nice reference if you glance up looking at it from anywhere in the space to see the time and the date. But a simple press like that will wake it up. And from there, we've got access to the lighting, listen, comfort, security, the full house menu. Uh, as well as the client's favourites. As you can see by the options on the air, the client's favourite up quite a lot of the stuff themselves. Um, but say for instance here, the door lock button, 
Pressing that button there will then unlock the front door. Likewise, I've got my music stations, and if I was to press any of those, so say Smooth UK, that would fire the Smooth UK on, and it's gonna add us straight on in this kitchen space here, and I'll turn the volume up. Now, if I wanted to add uh, music into the lounge, which is just to the other side of me here, or any of the other rooms, I could click to add a session, add it on into the lounge, and I've also got the tunes on in there. So coming back for onto here, if I press the four in the top corner here, I get access to control fours like deeper menu and the stuff that isn't favorited on. Little things such as the intercom. So if I just press the intercom here, I can see my available devices. Or I could choose to initiate a call there with the front door. When we're on an intercom call, and this is the same whether it be coming through to a touchscreen or a mobile device, uh, we've got the ability to press there again, open door, which is gonna open the front door. And then we've also got an open garage button there, which would open up the garage door for us. Coming back through here, um, we've got this swipe. So the swipe feature, because we've got kitchen here, we can swipe across to the gym. We can swipe across to the cinema room where I can see they've got Apple TV on and they're just cranking that up downstairs. We can keep coming through this way, kitchen, lounge. And again, from the background pictures on here, you can see the client has done a lot of personalization. Now, one of the other really cool features we've got in here and it is hidden, so I'm just gonna hide away from where it's got just in case the client's children are watching this. But within the kids' bedrooms there, we've got an option there to turn the sockets off. So by turning the sockets off, what that's gonna do is turn the power off in the room, turn off the games, consoles, and make them go to bed. So coming back through to the kitchen space here, through the comfort menu, We've got access here to the thermostats, but as I mentioned before, we've actually got these switched off at the minute, so they're uh, turned off. Um, but you can see there we have the thermostats in all of the house. Aside from that, in the listen menu, we've got access to stations, tuning radio, store music, Spotify, Airplay, and the ability to manage music and add music services yourself, such as Amazon Music, Deezer, Napster, Cubus, Sharebridge, which is um, Airplay, Spotify Connect, Tidal, and Tuning. We've also can come into the lighting, but as you can see by the keypad underneath me here, I actually prefer the lighting controlled um, like that. You can see those we've turned off. We could put it into a chill, which is turn those lights on. Uh, we could put it down into dining mode. Again, which would adjust them there and um, to the preset levels. I could come into them and manually control them here. We also have access to those scenes under the scene menu here and can activate all the scenes in the house or can press the filter button at the bottom and see what scenes are currently active. So coming back through here and over into the security menu, we've got the options of seeing the cameras, um, we've got the alarm and we've also got the locks and sensors. So in the locks and sensors, what that's gonna do is it's gonna give me the feedback of all the locks and sensors and any relays I've got around the house. We can see the states of garage doors. I can see porch motion sensors, front door motion sensors, the garage door, uh, as well as all the other devices. We can come back through here and we've got full integration into the Texacom alarm. So we can see the zone status on all the alarm zones around the house, as well as come through here and set our alarm directly through the touchscreen, which I'm not gonna do for obvious security reasons. Um, so coming back out of the security menu, uh, the last one we've got cameras. So the camera feeds uh, are integrated and will all pull through into the control for touchscreen um, for viewing them through here, as well as through the TVs and as well as through the monitor. One other feature we've got on here is we tend to always put a house control button here. So we can see that we've got an all on, all off, which is usually for the cleaner. House off leaving, which will turn all lights off in the house over 30 seconds. Uh, I'm gonna get the lads to cut to a cool little shot of that here. We can do house off bedtime, which will turn every light off in the house, apart from the two bedside tables. And then we can turn all the outside lights on and all the outside lights off. Last but not least, we have the service page. So we put this in on every single one of our jobs. So if I was to click the room at the top there, and I scrolled right to the very top, on the service floor, we have a room called service. Now, if I was to click into there, come behind the security menu, locks and sensors, we have got access to all of our devices here. Now, a lot of the time what we'd do is we'd actually favorite these back onto the homepage. Um, so things that we wanted clients to reset, such as the sources. 
However, what the client has requested us to do, um, he just likes it as it is basically. Well, let me just show you for an example and reset this on the back end. There we go. And it's as simple as that to do a Control 4 OS3 personalization. So if I wanted to turn that out off, I'll turn that off. And then if I wanted to turn it back on, we could just press it again and that would power cycle that device. So in this cupboard here, we've got our main AV rack and our termination box. So the termination box up at the top there, just out of shot, is where um, all the cables from the house terminate in and the rack gets built in. Now, the client wanted a 44U rack in here and the monitor in, but what I'm actually gonna do here is I'm gonna grab the rack, I'm gonna pull it a little bit closer towards the door so I can step out of this cupboard and then we'll take you through all the rack components properly. So, sat right on the very top of the rack there, we've got the Heat Miser Neo Hub. So that is connecting all our heating devices into the Control 4 system. And then coming down, behind that first one you mesh vent, we've got the ISP router. So what that is, is the internet service provider's connection into the outside world. And then coming down, we have our package router. So we've got a fully managed layer two network on this property. And um, we've the top router there been what manages our remote connection and remote access to site using Oversea. And it manages the internal network um, and reports any issues back to us, uh, such as devices dropping offline. And then we've got a mesh vent. And then the next device down is one of our package switches. Now, this is a second switch that the client's just added. He said to us, Rich, can we just make all data ports live in the house, which is why you can't see mini lights flashing on there um, for now. Um, unlike the one just below our rack strip, so we've got our Art Smart rack strip. This is actually a slightly older one. We've just got some new ones from Vantage Shines and Graphics. Um, Show you them soon. Um, but yeah, so the next device down is another network switch. So again, it's another, um, it's another package, layer two managed network switch, uh, an SX24. And then we come down, we've got a mesh vent. And then we've got a Control 4 EF5. So this is our main processor in the system. Um, so the reason we're using the EF5 processor for this house is because that will give us four contacts and four relays for controlling stuff such as doors and gates. We also have eight local infrared ports for controlling devices such as the Apple TV in the rack. And then we've got four audio streams. Now, Control 4 say is five because they count the HDMI port, um, which we don't, I'd call it an EA4 processor. So we've got our EA4 processor, um, which is providing our audio streams, which come down to the amps, which again, I'll show you in a minute. Um, but that is gonna kind of orchestrate the system and is the main brain. Now, I have a sneaking suspicion because the client kind of likes the best of the best of everything and wants his system to be absolutely top notch. So the EA5 is a perfectly spec processor for a house of this size, however, Let's like say I've got a sneaking suspicion he's gonna go for the Mac Daddy and upgrade that to the CA10 shortly, um, just because of how good it is. So uh, then we've got another mesh vent, and then we've got the package PDU. So the package PDU, don't forget that's got the little wheel on the front, so that clients can do a local reboot of a device in the rack without going too far into it. We also put the reset service page onto the touch screens, as well as us having access to the, this device remotely um, through Oversee. Coming down, we've got the CCTV monitor. So the CCTV monitor is showing us all the devices there um, and all the cameras and bits and pieces. In fact, it's showing you, <laughs> me and Cam stood in the garage, you flip bottom right. Um, and then just below there, we've actually got this drawer here. So what this drawer is housing is all the remotes for the devices, we've got a CCTV remote, and then we've got a mouse, um, which we can use there to control the CCTV MBR. Um, and we also have, alongside that, a wireless keyboard for entering passwords, such as that one. <laughs> and then we come down and we've got the CCTV MBR. So obviously the CCTV MBR on this particular job is a Higvision one, uh, and Higvision one is giving client remote access to his cameras, uh, as well as providing a recording facility. Um, we've got eight cameras on this property, and we generally recommend a terabyte per camera. So that has an eight terabyte, well two four terabyte hard drives in there. Um, so on this shelf here, we've got the, it's actually the My Energy Hub. Um, so the client's got a Zappy car charger in the garage for his Tesla motor. Um, so he's got that. And we've also got the Apple TV, um, which client's using for his server. 
which is the next device down just below the 2U mesh vent. Um, and this is the server that the client's using for streaming all his films around the property. Um, like you may see when we get to the client interview, um, the client is really, really into his films. So that's why we have the big server in there taking up 5U of space. Then we're gonna come down and we've got the Triad Audio Matrix. So this is an eight by eight audio matrix. So what that means is before I said about the Control 4 processor has four independent streams, then four independent streams, and then coming down to our audio matrix. And then inside the audio matrix, again, split off to the two amps that are below it there. So I've mentioned this on a lot of our videos that we just tend to use the Triad 4 zone eight channel amps. And the reason for that being, uh, it actually provides more power um, when more than four zones are active. Uh, and then coming down ever so slightly there, we have got another mesh vent before we hit the Anthem AVR. So this is the MRX740 and it's powering the Dolby Atmos 5.2.2 uh, Dolby Atmos system, uh, speaker system, and uh, powering the JBL speakers in the cinema room. So I'm gonna show you the cinema room separately. But yeah, really good quality um, AVR is that, really good quality receiver. And the client's over moving the sound with it. Last but not least, often mislooked on a lot of people's jobs and a lot of projects, but this device here is a UPS battery backup system. So effectively, um, if the rack power had failed for whatever reason, and um, then this UPS currently, let's wait the screen up, flick through the menus there. So if we had a power cut on here, this is gonna give us 15, well, 14 minutes, it's saying there, of essential UPS battery power. So if there's any kind of intermittent power issues, um, then that's gonna deal with that for us. And um, yeah, and that leaves all the components in the rack. So although this house is obviously a very, very, very nice house, as is always when you've got a cinema or media room, this is the absolute jewel in the crown. Really, really nice room. Uh, we have the Collingwood RGBW solution up here. I'm uh, using the Chow main driver. So that is integrated into Control 4 system. I'm uh, using the Collingwood RF kit, um, RF to Wi-Fi receiver. Um, obviously we've got the heat miser in here, um, but anyway, forget the standard lighting and power. Um, we have these. Now these are a little bit different. These are uh, photo frames, uh, LED backlit photo frames, which we've of course got fully integrated into Control 4. Uh, and then for the um, audio solution in here, we've got JBL. So the JBL Pro audio solution um, alongside and been powered by um, an Anthem AVR. Um, with two subs, so yeah, this cinema room absolutely kicks. It's so punchy and so clean, it is ridiculous. Um, client has got a Control 4 SR260 remote control in here. Again, I'll be honest, we started with Neos on this house, um, even though we recommend we don't recommend the Neo remote control, um, but he's got the he's got the SR260 in here now, so we can make full use of the buttons throughout the film. So in here, we've got the one dot, we'll put us onto the scene here, which is on the all on. And then if we use the three dot button on here, what that's gonna do, it's gonna fade all the lights off in the room over 10 seconds. And then we can bring them back to an all on um, with the uh, spotlights on here too. We've also utilized the pause and play button on here. So if there is a film on and you were to press play and the film was on, it's gonna put the room into darkness. And if we uh, wanted to pause it, just wanted to get up for a drink or toilet, that would just turn the photo frames on through the remote control. Anyway, let's get the Epson projector fired up. We'll go watch. We'll come into Apple TV and then we'll have a look at a little bit of a film. So that's it. I've now shown you through all the cool stuff that this house has got going on. And as you can see from behind me here, even the lighting on the night when this place is lit up is absolutely stunning. As well, coming a couple of days later, we'll have the client interview video. So we've had some very nice words off our client here. Um, as I said, self confessed tech addict who also loves art smart to bits. Um, so he's been very kind to say a couple of words. But for now, that's me done. <laughs>